this is a great song. Really fun. John Mayer, of course, Why Georgia, from its first album that most people heard called Room for Squares in 2001. This song is uh, has got so many different things in it that are great for students to learn. Now, most of them are really challenging, and that makes it uh, a lot of work. So, but there's just a ton of different things that you can you can get out of this song. There is percussion, slapping on the on the strings, getting getting the sound of a snare drum. That's what happens in the first part, along with um, in the, the percussive parts happen in some of the other things, but not so much in the finger style parts. We have some strumming that is heavily syncopated. Where we need to keep a steady, steady strum going, and I'm usually doing that with what I call the invisible pick, because we want to have your fingers available. I'm pretty sure John plays this with a pick, using the hybrid technique. It's hybrid technique. But in this lesson, we're going to be doing it with, with fingers, and um, and then we have to make the transition from picking into strumming and then back into picking. So that's another another little thing that happens in there. We have some really unusual chord shapes and sometimes when you have to use your left hand thumb, now he uses his thumb on a lot of notes, so I'm going to recommend, on, well three, F, F sharp, and G. I'm going to recommend only using it on one, the F, so we're going to, we're going to simplify that a little bit, but you're still going to have to use your thumb for some notes. You're going to have to land on some difficult chords and play some pretty quick little stretchy moves requiring really good hand position. If you notice when I played that, I had to have my thumb really low on the back of the neck, and if I was in a position to be using my thumb to play notes, that's going to make that difficult. So on top of all that, he of course sings while he's doing this. Now that is its own level of, uh, of difficulty. We'll maybe address that a little bit. I'm not too sure yet. So, so we've got a lot of unusual chords. Uh, we'll, do a, we'll talk a little bit about the theory involved with what chords, uh, why they're named unusual. What is this suspended 11 chord we have? We don't. We have an add 11. Suspended 2, what's that? Same as a ninth chord? No. So uh, a lot of unusual chords because sometimes you just leave certain strings open and gets this really hollow kind of uh, mysterious sound. So a lot of great stuff to... Uh, to learn in this song, and will be, um, you may have found tablature to this before, and if it's like some of the stuff I've seen, it could be 75 pages worth of stuff. So I've got a few attachments that will make this a little, well, condensed. Uh, broken it down into just the vital parts of the song, three pages worth of tab, which you can pick up here as a, a guitar profile or a PDF, and in any case, you can just print it up, and it has all the stuff you need, shows you the chords and the rhythms, but we'll be walking through it measure by measure as well. And then of course I have an attachment that is just the chords in a chart form over the lyrics. So we'll have a whole segment that talks about once you've learned the verse, that part, the chorus, the pre-chorus, and the bridge, with some really, again, another set of unusual chords, so we're going to take a look at that. And the bridge is the one that ends with some of these really cool jazzy chords I played just a second ago. And then back into that. Wow, it's starting to speed up. Should practice with the metronome. Anyway, that's what we have on tap in uh, this... Uh, just great all-round lesson of John Mayer's tune, Why Georgia? Suspensions, extensions, adds, minor nines, a lot of confusing terms in uh, chord names. And I have, of course, theory stuff that talks about all of that as, as uh, separate stuff up here. But I want to take a moment in this lesson to address a couple of the chord names that we have in this. Basic chords are built on a triad, the 1, 3, and 5 of a scale that create either a major or a minor, or diminished or augmented, triad. And the first extension of those is a chord that has four notes in it, which would be a seventh chord. We have a lot of um, 
altered or modified chords in Y Georgia. And most of them include the note D. I'm going to suggest that every time you play that note on any chord, you play it with your fourth, fourth finger. And that's because it'll allow you a lot of times to change chords with and keep it as a constant note down. Well, the right hand in this song has got some uh, really unusual and complicated technique. But 90% of it is just strumming that you could either do with a pick or with the invisible pick. So when it gets into all the parts except the intro and the verse, you can just be strumming. And you're just going to keep a steady down. Uh, the rhythm is it's syncopated. And what we're listening for there is the hands moving quickly at the speed of eighth notes. Da, 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 da. And there's an accent on the fourth of the eighth notes. The verse to Why Georgia is one of the most complicated parts just because of the percussion involved with the right hand. So in this segment, that's all we're going to talk about is how you can possibly play this. And so all you really need for this page, or this is the page that has the tablature. First page of the tablature is just the verse. It's got the chords all at the top and all that kind of stuff. But all we're really going to do is look at the tab and walk through it and work on our timing. And we'll try, uh, probably try a slow down metronome playthrough too as part of it. In the left hand close up, I mentioned that usually when you play the, the D in any chord, the D on the second string at the third fret, it's good to play it with your little finger. I'm taking that back now because this is the time, this is the one time in the song it's not to your advantage to do that because of some other, because of what ha what's about to happen. I'll show you in a minute. So let's play this G5 or the G sus2. Sorry, it's going to be a sus2 as soon as we do the hammer on with our second and third fingers. So second finger on the sixth string, third finger on the second string. And we're going to hit that G in the bass, then do the hammer, then pinch or grab the second and third strings and do the hammer on in there and then we have to immediately come in with our percussive with our snap on the strings and keep that note ringing hopefully so the, so the snap didn't kill the rest of the strings so that's the first thing to practice one beat and coming in with your thumb on just slapping the sixth string The chorus and what I'm calling the pre-chorus to the song are much easier than what we just did there. But what you just have to do here is play a couple of simple chords. And the, and the most important thing that you got to remember here is where do you want the accents to be in the strumming? So if we take a look at just a quick rundown of when a strumming pattern is written down in 16th notes like they are. Hopefully now we're looking at page two of the tab. The bridge to uh, Why Georgia has a completely different feel. All of a sudden it becomes this driving power chord driven song. And the way we get into this is by, this comes out of the second chorus. The second chorus, rather than ending with the F, well it still ends with the F, and the F to the C, and instead of going back to the verse riff, which is the first ending, right now I'm on page three of the tablature. Instead of that, we skip that and we come out of the F chord and the C, and now we just four quarter note strums on G. Okay, so you've got all those parts down. The verse, the pre-chorus, the chorus, the bridge, first and second endings to everything, all the transitions, and now are just wondering how the heck do I put these together, what do I do next? One of the best things you could do is go get, make sure you have the album and work on playing along with him so that you can get, the, get a good feel for everything that's happening. But what we're going to need here is all the attachments, which are really only two. The chart that has the chords and the words, two pages, and then the three pages of tablature, maybe. We might be able to get through it without that if you really know all the parts as well as you should by the time you're worrying about playing through the arrangement.